Greetings, Ron Niebrecke here. I wanted to do a video and talk about uh, feeding and attracting birds to your backyard for photography. And actually, this would apply for really anyone that wants birds in their backyard. Uh, I think no matter where you live, even if you're in a small apartment, you could put a little bird feeder out, a little perch, you could work on your photography, you could get cool pictures. It's one of those things that's kind of open to everybody out there. And so I think this could be really valuable information. For those that don't know, the last three or four years here, uh, we've purchased this remote property. It's a remote, beautiful 10 acres uh, north of Tucson, and uh, we call it the Desert Photo Retreat. I have three photography blinds, a place to stay. Uh, experienced photographers can come out here and photograph the, uh, the desert birds, or I can do workshops, teaching things, that kind of stuff. So I've spent a lot of time over the last three or four years perfecting the bird feeding, trying all kinds of different things, and fine-tuning what works and what doesn't work, and I want to share that with you now. First, I no longer buy any pre-packaged uh, bird seed mixes, with one exception. For the ground birds, namely quail, I'll buy this 50-pound bag they have at the, at the Costco in Tucson. It's basically a quail mix or a bird dove mix, and it's 10 bucks for 50 pounds. Uh, you can't buy you can't buy anything that weighs 50 pounds for 10 bucks you can't even buy air if that makes sense so there you can't go wrong for my more quality birds bird feeding needs like for the cardinals the pyroluxia a lot of those birds uh i've gone to making my own the the problem with the pre-packaged bird mixes is that they include some seeds in there that the birds typically don't seem to like very well like millet and they include some fillers and stuff that just end up being left over that the birds don't eat. And so by making a quality food by my, you know, myself, I actually save money and it's everything that the birds like. And what I do now, I've kind of narrowed it down. I've done test marketing, put in different piles in different corners to see what they like and don't like. And I basically fine tuned it to just three things. Uh, one, I use about half a bucket of black oil sunflower seeds. Everybody seems to like that. I then uh, mix in, you know, roughly a, uh, a half of the remainder is sunflower hearts. And I might reduce this number because it seems to be, I, I'm getting a lot of the smaller birds like house finches, which I'm not as wild about. And I think this, this might, might be one reason, but I'm always kind of fine tuning it. And then finally, I use the big, uh, the big nuts unsalted i get these these are not for human consumption uh and i just mix these together i put them in these five gallon buckets i get from home depot they got a snap-on ring and then a spin-on airproof lid and for like a dollar more you can get them in black or white you don't have to get home depot orange the seed i get sometimes i get it at home deep not home depot but i get it at tractor supply whenever possible though i get it at my local uh, feed store there's one in marana just off the freeway i just like working with a little bit of the mom and pop operation even if it's a, a dollar or so a bag more and i typically we go through a lot of food out here so i've been buying bags 50 pound bags whenever possible uh you may not need that kind of quantity but by doing that i can get these uh, five gallon buckets and i could fill them for maybe a little over $5 a bucket. So it's quite economical. So here's one of the buckets I get from Home Depot. Again, it's just got a snap-on ring and a nice airproof spin-off lid. So far, this has been javelina proof, believe it or not. I've had them push them all around the yard, but so far they haven't gotten into them, although the squirrels will nibble in the lids. And then it's just a matter of uh, just dumping them in here. And, and once I do that, uh, after I pour all three bags, you know, a little mixture of about a third of each, maybe a little more of the black oil. Then I just mix them together with my hand. So here's a mixture. I try to be really careful not to spill because as soon as I do, I'll have a javelina party here. But then I just come in here and just reach from the bottom and drag it from the top and uh, try to mix it up real good. Sometimes I'll pour between the two, that kind of thing. You get the idea. I actually uh, place the food itself in a dove-proof feeder. It's uh, when I get in a shop in Tucson, I'll put it in the notes there at the bottom of the, of the video. But uh, it's got a screen. I'll show you a video towards the end. It's got a screen, uh, cardinals, everybody, even the gilded flicker, woodpeckers, they all can get in it. Uh, but the screen's just too small for the dove, so it keeps the dove out. Otherwise, we'd have a real problem with dove. Here's what the dove-proof feeders look like. You can see it's just a screen, just a mesh. 
And these gaps right here, and I could wait till they were flying around, but this is big enough. A cardinal can get through there. Almost everybody can get through there but a dove. It takes them a few weeks to figure it out, but uh, I tell you what, nowadays the cardinals will fly right in and right out without even blinking. In fact, they can pass through the whole thing. So uh, it makes it, uh, makes it good. Otherwise, we just get inundated with dove. One of the other uh, things that, that's very popular with the birds is mealworms. And the, everybody loves this, actually. Cactus wren, all the wren especially, the curved bill, black-throated sparrows, the mockingbird, they'll come seek this out. If I put it on a cholla, on a cactus, they'll run it down and find this stuff. So this stuff, the, the mealworms are fantastic. I've tried live mealworms with... Uh, this is very popular with the birds, as are the live mealworms. I don't know that it's worth the premium for the live mealworms. If you're just trying to attract the birds for the first time, it might be worth it because you'll, you'll get the extra movement, and that's kind of nice. Um, the other thing that's super popular is suet. And now I buy most of my bulk suet from Tractor Supply. They have these things. They're about 79 cents in bulk. You can usually find them on sale for 79 cents a piece. We go through a couple a day, um, but they don't melt. They're, they're pretty popular with the birds. One of the nice things is, is they don't crumble under the ground, so it lasts for a little while. This suet, by, on the other hand, crumbles under the ground a little bit, and so I go through it. When I use this, I tend to go through it way too fast. So now what I do is just use this when I want to photograph birds. This is, uh, I get it at Home Depot. It's a nut suet, and it's really popular with the birds. And the other nice thing is it just crumbles, it's clean, it's not all oily, so it doesn't get all over your hands and fingers, but you can shove it into cracks of wood or perches, that kind of thing. You can hide it real well. It just pushes in and sticks in there real good. And so uh, when I'm photographing, I bust this stuff out and put it on perches and hide it around. But for day to day, just attracting the birds, I use the stuff from the tractor supply. When I'm really trying to bring in the birds, I use this stuff. There's a place in Tucson called the Wild Bird Store. Wild Birds Online is their uh, .com, is their website. They make this stuff called Nuts and Bugs. It's supposed to have, uh, you know, it's got ground peanuts, some suet, mealworms, uh, a bunch of different stuff, including like 10,000 10, bugs per pound, I think it is. So you can see uh, it's just kind of like suet, but, but with a lot more bugs and nuts and stuff in it. This stuff, I've had mixed results. If you look at the website, if you go to their store, they have all these testimonials about this stuff bringing in all these great birds. And I haven't given up on it. I typically use it when I'm photographing and I don't use it because it is a premium product. I don't use it as much uh, from just day-to-day -day operations. I'll keep a little bit of it out so the birds kind of get used to it. Supposedly, this will bring in fly catchers, gnat catchers, all kinds of birds that normally wouldn't go to feeders. So nuts and bugs is another option that I think in the future I'm going to be more excited about. Right now, I'm kind of lukewarm. Um, but uh, that same store, the, uh, is the bird store, is where I get the dove-proof feeders, which is, a, which is a real plus here in the southwest. The other thing that's a must-have, as long as you're doing, uh, trying everything and you got the room for it, is thistle. Now, I'll buy these little thistle socks. They, you can find them with seed or without seed. I just happen to buy some with seed in it. And uh, I'll hang these socks up, and then I buy the thistle in bulk from the hardware store, I mean, from the feed store. Uh, the, the, the goldfinches love this stuff. In Alaska, the pine cysts can love thistle. So, and the goldfinches are nice. Not only are they a colorful bird, they're a really brave bird. And they're some of the first ones, if you go out and put food out and then go back in the blind, goldfinches are often one of the first birds to come back in, and they kind of give the other birds confidence. So they're, they're a valuable bird for a, a number of reasons. I'm always looking for other options. I'll go through the feed store. Uh, I've bought in crickets and all kinds of different bugs, and I'm always experimenting with funny things and other things. So far, the mealworms and what I've showed you here has been the most popular. This is funny. I had this book. I got it in Alaska back in the, a long time ago, like 20, 30 years ago. And I remember reading this, and it talked about the bird favorite is a no-no. It talks about the innocent days before psychedelics, 60s, one of the most highly recommended and most eagerly eaten seeds at the feeder was hemp. Almost all seed-eating birds prefer hemp to any other seed offered them, explains Thomas McElroy Jr. in a 1950 handbook of tracting birds. Unfortunately, the hemp's no longer, it's no longer legal, blah, 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 you'll have the law enforcement at your door. 
So I was walking through the feed store one day, and wouldn't you know it, I just this caught my eye, but it was a bag of, in the bird seed section, a bag of hemp seed. And uh, I thought, wow, this is might be the holy grail of tracking birds. So I, it was expensive. It was like 30 bucks for that little bag. But I thought, well, if it really brings in all these birds, it'd be worth it. And I put it in a separate corner, put all four different kinds of seeds in the corners of my uh, dove-proof feeder. And at the end of the day, that this seed was the only stuff that wasn't eaten. So, so much for that. That's why I still have this bag after after a couple of years. In fact, the, the mice that break into our RV haven't even eaten it. So that tells you something. One of the other ways I attract birds is through water. Having a water supply, uh, a bird bath, anything like that where they could come in and get a drink. And if you have a drip like this, that works even better. The sound, the motion, it goes a long ways towards attracting birds. I also have a little uh, solar fountain. It doesn't work very good at the end of the day, but it works pretty nice. Uh, in the middle of the day, that thing sprouts real nice and will help attract birds. This is actually up at my uh, 12 foot by 12 foot uh, reflection table at one of my newest blinds. The final thing I put out is sugar water. I like these little uh, hummingbird feeders like this. They're easy to clean, they're easy to maintain. If you have a problem with ants, you can put water in the center. And uh, not only does it bring in a lot of hummingbirds, it'd be fun if one came in right now, but the woodpeckers love them as well. I don't do anything fancy, no food coloring. I just use sugar mixture four to one. Uh, in fact, I use a Nalgene bottle. I fill it to 28 ounces on the side of the bottle. You can see it, and then I put seven ounces of uh, sugar into the Nalgene, shake it up, put it in the fridge. It's really important you keep these clean and you change them out, especially if it's hot. If it's hot, you almost wanna change them out every day. Even if it's cooler, you wanna change them out every few days. Uh, I also have some larger feeders that are Oriole feeders. In the spring, when you get the migrants, you get the Orioles and the tanagers, those types of birds. They love uh, the sugar water as well. And you can get them where you can put it like an orange, a half an orange in the, uh, you know, attaches to the feeder and that helps bring in the birds, those spring migrants especially, it helps bring them in and they really like the orange as well. So uh, the sugar water is another important part of this. We get quite a few hummingbirds here in the middle of winter anyway. Well, it's uh, January here in uh, Tucson in Southern Arizona and uh, it's like 74 degrees. I'm in shorts as you can see. So if you're looking for, uh, you wanna learn more or see this stuff in action, feel free to visit us. I'll put the link in the, in the notes there, but we're at the desertphotoretreat.com and there's dashes between those words. You can probably Google it as well to show up. So uh, hopefully we see you here. And if not, hopefully you have some great luck with your backyard birds.